This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Good Sunday to you, my brothers and my sisters, our family and friends, to you, our virtual visitors. We're so grateful to God that God has given us another day of life. And the Bible declares that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. And so even as we are prepared to do in this place, I hope that you are prepared to do wherever you are. And that is to take a moment right now and to bless God for the blessing, for the blessing of life, for the blessing of health, and for the blessing of strength. Our God is great and greatly to be praised, and we have come to bless his holy name. Whether we know it or not, we have so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for, so much to bless his name for. And I hope and pray that you have come with the spirit of thanksgiving today to bless God for all that he has done. As we prepare to enter into the service of the Lord, as you know, we always begin with a period of consecration and with a period of corporate prayer. And if you're not already positioned in a place where you can get before the presence of the Lord, I will give you a moment to do that. If you're alone, I want you to assume a posture. If you're with your family and your friends or with loved ones, I want you all to gather together even now as we go before the Lord to talk. I still believe that prayer changes things. Yes. I still believe yes. that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. I still believe what the word of God says, where Jesus says, if we ask anything in his name yes. Yes. and according to his will, it will be granted unto yes. us. Yes. If you believe in the power of prayer, I want you to posture your heart now, and I want us to do this in a spirit of sincerity now as we lift up before the Lord uh, all of our prayer requests and take before the Lord even the intercessions of other brothers and sisters. I want us to remember in prayer today, again, you know we always take names to the Lord uh, other than our requests. And I want you to remember in our prayers uh, today, uh, particularly, uh, many of you have received the news uh, that Dr. Queen Esther Martin uh, her daughter uh, unexpectedly uh, transitioned and went home to be with the Lord um, early Saturday morning, and uh, we are praying for her. We know the difficulty that Dr. Martin has experienced uh, in terms uh, with the loss of family members over these past several years. I know uh, she's lost a mother, lost several brothers uh, and, and sisters. Uh, she lost a son several years ago, and uh, we just know how difficult this can be. Uh, particularly when death like this happens, yeah. from our perspective, uh, out of the natural order. And uh, so, Dr. Martin, I don't know if you're tuning in today, but I want you to know we're praying a special prayer for you today. Uh, our hearts are going out to you. We're lifting you up. Uh, my heart has been burdened with you, and I've been praying for you in the spirit uh, all morning long, all day long yesterday, and we're lifting you up today. Sister Elizabeth Dickey as well, we're praying for you, her brother, uh, Brother David Green, uh, went home to be with the Lord as well. We are praying for uh, Sister Dickey. Uh, I got a chance to speak with her. She informed me that uh, it is only her and one other sibling uh, that remains, and uh, he is ill. And so we are praying for you, Sister Dickey, and the entire Skelton family. Still praying for Sister Priscilla Knight, uh, who is still grieving the loss of her mother. We lift you up, Sister Knight, as well. Reverend David Celestine, we're still praying for you, my brother, if you're watching and if you're tuning in today. Sister Charlotte Blocker submitted a prayer request this week uh, on behalf of her brother. And so we're lifting uh, Sister Blocker's uh, brother up in prayer. His name escapes me at the moment. If I find it, I will uh, let you know of it at a later time. But please know that we're lifting him up in prayer. And let us also pray uh, for Sister uh, Cynthia Yarbrough, a uh, very, very close aunt. Uh, went home uh, to be with the Lord uh, on yesterday, and so we're praying for Sister Yarbrough as well. I'm told that she's uh, taking that pretty hard. And there are a host of other names uh, that we could call out, but we know that the Lord knows. But I want us to pray especially uh, for those brothers and sisters today who stand in need of our intercession. Our deacons are going to come now. I'm going to ask them to do this. If they would come very quickly, give us a quick scripture, offer to us a prayer of intercession. And we're going to lay our supplications before the Lord. Good morning, Bella Vesta, and to our listening members. We pray that 
during this time of season that everyone will be able to share with their families, but at the same time do it in a safe way. Let us read. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites filled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great myths because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. May the Lord have blessings on the reading and hearers of the word. Church, let, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we stand here today understanding that you are the, the, the creator God, the creator of the, the, the heavens and the earth, the ruler of all nations. And we stand today, O oh God, understanding that you are the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we want to give thanks to you today and grateful today, O oh God, for your character. And we know that uh, this year has brought many difficulties and many challenges, O oh God, but but we know that you are still good. Yes. God, regardless of what we're going through, you are still good. Lord, we know we have lost loved ones, but you are still good, oh, Father. We know that the, the COVID numbers may be increasing, oh, God, but you are still good, Lord. Lord, there may be sickness in our bodies, but we know that you are still good, Father. God, we just thank you today. We thank you for your son. We thank you for Calvary, oh, God. Lord, you paid it all for us, and we, we just thank you today, oh, God. Thank you, Lord, for you. that we have the assurance that you are still on the throne, yes, yes, that yes. you are still in control, oh God, regardless of what we may face this year, oh God. We thank you for it. We thank you for your power, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you for who you are today, oh God. We know that that we still believe, Lord, that we, you are still able today, oh God. Yes. Lord, regardless of what we're facing today, Lord, Lord, you still have the power to, to restore brokenness, oh God. Yes, that you yes. still have the power, oh God, to to give us rest when we're weary, Lord. You still have the power today to give us strength, oh God, when we're weak. Lord, you still have the power to give whatever we need today, oh God. You still have the power, Lord. And now we pray today for this nation, oh God. We pray for our church, Lord. We pray, oh God, for every name that's on the prayer list, oh Lord. Oh God, remember the, the Knight family, Lord. Remember the, the Yarbrough family, oh God. Lord, remember the Dickey family, oh Lord. Remember the Celestine family, oh Lord. Oh, comfort and strength in the Martin family on this morning, oh Lord. Oh God, we need you, Lord. We need you to, to be our leaning post, oh God. Oh, be with them in the name of Jesus today, oh Lord. Oh Lord, now bless our pastor today. Oh God, give him strength, oh Lord. Lord, speak through him today, oh God, to equip us, oh God, with your word. Equip us with your truth, oh God, to, so we'll be able to withstand what lies ahead of us today, oh God. Now prepare us, oh Lord, prepare our hearts, our minds for worship today, oh God, so that we could hear what you would have us to hear, oh God, so we could do what you would have us to do. Oh God, we love you today. We need you in every aspect of our lives. Oh Lord, bless this church, bless this nation. Help us, oh God, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, we love you. And Father, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? He is good and his mercy endureth forever. We give him thanks because he's worthy to be praised. Not because of anything that we've done, but just because he is God. Guess what? I'm standing here looking at you and you're standing here looking at me. Oh, give thanks right where you are. Right where you may be sitting, right where you may be laying, start praying, start lifting those hands, start praising, start admonishing, start giving God all the praise. Somebody say, he's worthy. He's worthy. And we're grateful this morning. We thank you.
we thank God for he allows us another opportunity and another chance to praise his name. Y'all feel like praising him this morning? Yeah. Come on, put your hands down. If I never live another day, yeah. if I never see a smiling face, yeah. if I never take another breath or take another step, I want to say thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. If I never hear another word, yeah, yeah Lord. If I never hear what's to be heard, if I never see another sight, yeah. or take another bite, yeah. I want to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all that you've done. Come on. Thank you for being the part that you are. Thank you for the food on my table. I know, I know you're able. I want to say thank, thank you. you. If I never take another walk, hey Lord. If I ever have another talk. If I never scale the channel wall or see the Taj Mahal, I want to say thank you. If I never find that special friend, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. if I never so and over and go back again, if I never see another sight or take another bite, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for food on my I table. I know you're able. I want to say thank you. Oh, thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the that you are. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. You're able. Thank you for being Thank you for food on my table. I know you're able. I want to say thank you. Oh, I want to say. I want to say thank you. 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 For all that you've done for me. Thank you. I want to say thank you. For food on the table. Thank you. I want to say thank you. For life, health, and strength. Thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you. Thank you. If I had 10,000 tongues. I want to say thank you. Thank you. I just couldn't thank you enough. Oh, yeah, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Sound real good to me. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to say a long prayer. I just say thank you. Thank you. For the little things, thank you. Thank you. For 2020, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All we've been through, thank you. Thank you. Lord, you kept us through danger seen and unseen. Thank you. Lord, you woke me up this morning. I want to say thank you. 
And for that, I say thank you. Lord, you still paying my bill. Thank you. And for that I say thank you. I want to say thank you. Lord, you keep my children fine. Thank I you. Say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. How many of y'all out there just want to say thank you? Things might not be where you want them to be, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. I wanna say thank you. Oh, I wanna say, I wanna say thank you. you. Hallelujah. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. How many of you that's your testimony? You want to say thank you to the Lord. God has been so good. God has been so kind. We say good morning again to each and every one of you, and we thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, do us a favor. If you have not yet shared this link on uh, Facebook Live, we want you to go ahead and share this live feed so that as many people as possible can tune in to the Word today and experience the wonderful worship that is going on in this place. To all of you on YouTube who are watching, we say good morning to you as well. Listen, if you are a virtual visitor, will you please let us know where you are watching from, where you are viewing from. We want to welcome you to the virtual experience of the Bella Vista Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much for joining us. We are well aware today that right now, and even as I, I looked on social media today, there are hundreds of churches and ministries that are streaming their online worship services. But we thank you today for allowing the Lord to order your steps, to order your clicks and your thumbs, to navigate your way to the ministry of Bella Vista. And we believe that you are not tuning in by accident today, but by divine providence. God has something special for you today. God has something to say to you today. And we're believing that something powerful and something transformative is going to happen in your life. And so we thank you so much for joining us and for tuning in. God be praised for the wonderful things that he has done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise him. If y'all want to take a load off, y'all can. We give God praise for yet another opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth. Y'all, I'm just so full of Jesus' joy today. Uh, just brings that which is required and requested of us. And as I say to us week after week, for those of us who are members of the Bella Vista Church, I am so grateful for your continued faithfulness in the area of financial stewardship. Uh, you have been superb and stellar in giving, and we want that trend to continue even this day. I know uh, that Black Friday is this week, but I know that we have a mature congregation uh, who believes in giving God what's right and not what's left. And so we're going to give to the Lord and bring to the Lord our tithe and our offering even on this third Sunday. The media team is putting before you the multiple ways that you can participate with us in the worship of giving via this virtual space. You can hop over to our church website, bellavistambc.org. Drop down to the bottom of that page. Click the online giving link. And you can submit your offering, your tithes, or to the various giving efforts. We want each and every one of you, those of you, you if you were watching last week, you received another admonition uh, for all of us to either commit for the first time or recommit uh, to our giving to the Beautiful Vision Capital Stewardship Campaign. You can give to that today as well. As we're so excited about everything that's taking place in Phase 2 regarding the renovations of our sanctuary. For those of you who may be watching for the first time, that's why we're in this space. We're in our multi-purpose building, worshiping here because our sanctuary is being transformed uh, to help us do ministry on a greater level uh, in the season in which we are living when we shall return. So we are excited about that. But in order for us to continue to do that, we need you to be faithful in the area of your giving. If you have your phone handy, you can text to give your offering to 713-903-7611. Or if you want to mail your gift in or drop it off, mail it in or drop it off to 803 East 36th Street. Houston, Texas, 77022. Let's give with liberal and cheerful hearts. I'm going to pray for these gifts, and we're going to worship the Lord through giving. God, we thank you as always for blessing us with the resources of being able to give. We ask now that you have a 
filled with liberal and cheerful hearts. Consecrate them now. Give us the wisdom to use them and apportion them properly. Most of all, God, we want to be able to expand the reach of the gospel. And we want to be able to improve lives that we come into contact with. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's give to the Lord. As you give today, let me make you aware of a few things. Amen. First of all, we want to say thank you to each and every one of you who donated gift cards, care cards, and we're going to be blessing families and individuals with this Thanksgiving season. Thank you so much. I haven't got the final tally yet of all that we have collected. I know we got a tally of the mail-in, but we haven't got the tally yet of those that were dropped off. As soon as we get the total amount, I will let you know if we met our goal or not, but whatever it is that we gave, please know that it is going to be a great blessing to some man, to some woman, to some family, to some child during this Thanksgiving season. And I want to thank you for your generosity, helping us to improve lives here in this community and across the city of Houston. Uh, we also, parents, want to remind you of our virtual Christmas program that's going to be coming up in the month of December. And you want to make sure if you have not request, requested a Christmas speech for your child, you want to do that today. Uh, please email uh, Sister Estella West at Estella West at AOL.com. I know the flyer uh, has both uh, Sister West and Dr. Martin's email address on there. Uh, but with all that has transpired uh, with uh, in the life of Dr. Martin, uh, I think we just want to direct those primarily to Sister West during those times, uh, during this time. So if you want to request a Christmas speech for your child or want your child to participate in the Christmas program, email Sister Estella West at Estella West at AOL dot com. Uh, we are also asking that each of you, the wonderful uh, families and individuals of Bella Vista, if you would submit a picture for our Christmas collage, uh, that we're going to be airing in the month of December as well. Uh, we want you to submit that picture to graphics at bellavistambc.org, or you can submit it to gwingate at bellavistambc.org, and we want you to submit those pictures by December the 11th. Make sure that you do those as well. We sponsored, the Bella Vista Church did, uh, on yesterday, uh, a food drive to be able to uh, be a blessing to some individuals in this community. Or one of our members rather participated in a food drive and she informed me this morning uh, that we have uh, I believe five frozen turkeys uh, that are left over and available. Uh, they are here at the sanctuary. If you or you know someone who is in need of a turkey uh, this Thanksgiving season, will you please email us or contact us uh, at some point today uh, to let us know if you will need them and we will coordinate some type of plan uh, to make sure that you get those turkeys. They are first come, first serve. Uh, we only have five left. And so if you need one, please make sure uh, that you contact us this day. All right. Again, we praise the Lord for the privilege of being able to give now. And we are moving forward in worship as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. Amen.
lift our hands and say thank you. One more day. Thank you. Just one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you. Lord, you started me on my way. Thank you. Lord, for food on my table. Thank you. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you. You've been so good. Thank you. Lord, you've been so kind. Thank you. If I had 10,000 times, thank you. I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, I just want to say thank you. so good we lift our hands and we lift our hearts we've got so much to thank God for oh we say thank you <laughs> for waking me up oh early this morning Oh, thank you for your grace. <laughs> we thank you for your mercy. We say hallelujah, thank you. Oh, we say thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We say thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Lord, we say thank you for your mercies and for your grace. 
Thank you for how you have proven yourself time and time again. For blessings seen and unseen. Those that we can touch. Those that we cannot discern with eyes. God, we say thank you. We ask now that you would bless your word. Prepare every heart, prepare every spirit to receive what you have to say. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Right where you are, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. Oh, come on. We can do better than that, y'all. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Amen. I want to today, as we are in the midst of this Thanksgiving season, there's a word that the Lord laid on my heart that I pray will be a blessing to each and every one of you. I want you to find in your Bibles or on your Bible apps, for those of you who are joining us, uh, the Old Testament book of Lamentations. Lamentations, that's immediately following the major prophecy of Jeremiah, the book of Lamentations, Lamentations. And I want you to turn to chapter 3, Lamentations 3, and I want to read in our hearing verses 16 through 24. These verses may sound familiar many of us, but if this is your first time hearing these words, this is a good verse of scripture to deposit into your spiritual memory bank. From the New Revised Standard Version, the word of God reads like this. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continuously thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Amen. It's verses 16 and 17, particularly verse 17 that caught my attention this week, where the writer says, my soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. I want to talk from this thought today. Remember God. Remember, remember God. You may be seated in the presence of God or in your homes. Remember Remember God. Remember God. Family, it's, it's, it's amazing the thoughts that you can have when your life is violently shaken out of balance and the effects of high anxiety have filtered through every aspect of your being. The year was 586 B.C., and it produced what is unquestionably the most traumatic moment in the history of God's people. Through bloody and barbaric acts of conquest, the Babylonians, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, have laid siege to Jerusalem, the citadel of God's people. The national and personal devastation was horrifying. See the picture. After 18 months, 
of holding the city hostage and allowing food deprivation, disease, and death to weaken the kingdom. The walls in Jerusalem were eventually breached and literally all hell broke loose. During the invasion of Jerusalem, their king, Zedekiah, was captured by the Babylonian army. And after his capture, he was forced to watch his sons be killed in front of him. After watching his children be killed in front of him, his eyes were gouged out before he was carried away in chains. The people in the city, those who had survived the starvation, watched as their husbands were captured and or killed. Their wives and their daughters raped before they were captured and or killed. Their newborn children, those who had them, were thrown from cliffs. Their houses burned, and their glorious and sacred temple that had stood for 400 years was reduced to ruins. Nothing was left of the nation and the house that bore God's name. There were very few survivors, and those who did survive were forced to make the 1,000-mile journey on foot into exile in Babylon where they would remain for 70 years. Jeremiah was one of those survivors. And like a news anchor reporting live from the scene of a war zone, the prophet weeps and laments as he offers eyewitness insight and a painful perspective on the utter decimation and destruction of Jerusalem. His heart is especially grieved because Jeremiah, those of you who are familiar with his story, he was the one who had preached to them, even with tear-stained eyes and a broken heart, that if they did not repent from their sins of spiritual idolatry, their sins of social oppression, and the sin of political recklessness, that this was going to be the end result. The people, however, dismissed his passion and branded him as a traitor. They beat him repeatedly to silence him. And they even threw Jeremiah in jail. Even still, with all that Jeremiah had endured, Jeremiah was one who possessed, don't miss this, a theology of hope. Jeremiah had a theology of hope. He believed, based from his experiences with God and his prophetic insight, that God could be trusted to remain true to God's character and even bring blessings out of brokenness. And you only need to revisit Jeremiah 29, 11 to be reminded of this. What Jeremiah would prophetically encourage God's people by telling them that even though they had experienced what would be the worst in their lives, that when their season of exile was over, Jeremiah would tell them that the plans of God would map out a blueprint of blessings for their future. You know the words he would say to them on behalf of God, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah knew God. He was intimately acquainted with the ways of God. His theology was strong and sound. Yet, I repeat again what I just said to you a few minutes ago. That is, it's amazing the thoughts that you can have when your life is violently shaken out of balance. The effects of high anxiety have filtered through every aspect of your being. Hear me, family? I don't care how much you know about God. When your world is shaken, when your life experiences a trauma that it did not anticipate, when you have been pushed out of your cognitive and emotional equilibrium into a state of imbalance, I don't care how much you know about God, when life happens to you, you can forget a lot of what you know. I wonder if I'm talking to anybody this morning. 
You, you can be a person of great spiritual depth and possess an awareness of God that most people desire, but even then, when your eyes behold a type of devastation that you didn't even think was possible and your life is going and drifting through a haze of hurt, you will question some of your theology. <laughs> You, you will question some of what you know about God. And I could stand all here morning long and could delineate ad nauseum about what we have all had a front row seat to in 2020 in terms of the tension and this, uh, in terms of uh, the, the devastation that has emanated from this pandemic and all of the public tension and, and this immediate past presidency. I could also outline some of the personal instances of loss and damage and adversity and suffering and misfortune that many of us have gone and are going through in our own context. But I, I, I'll allow you to make your own existential connection, but, but the point I want to raise is that life can hit you hard. And it can hit you so hard that you will have some moments when your mind dismisses even if only for a moment, what you know about God and the sentiments of your heart express to him your low approval rating of what he is allowing to transpire in your life. And I know to some of you who are deep and pseudo-spiritual, what I'm saying borders on heresy to you. <laughs> but, but, but I believe that there are many of you like me who are open, honest, and spiritually mature enough to acknowledge that you don't always approve of what God allows to happen. God doesn't always get a round of applause or a vote of acceptance from you because there are seasons, hear me, there are seasons when it seems like God is on the wrong side. I, I, I know that's, 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 that's tough to chew on, but if we're honest, sometimes when we look at what happens, there are seasons when it seems like God is on the wrong side. And re re regardless of our perspective, how we feel, the truth of it all, however, is that God is sovereign, and that he is not accountable to us to give us an explanation for his actions. God, God does whatever pleases him. But when it is, however, that the actions that please God do not please us, God has given us a language. He's given us a language through which we can communicate our frustration without corrupting our faith. And that language, I want to give some of you a new word today, that language is the language of lament. Somebody say lament. Somebody type lament. God has given us the language of lament to communicate our frustration without corrupting our faith. God has given us the language of lament to help us acknowledge our pain and our suffering in an authentic way. To express our disapproval in the happenings of the world and in our lives, all the while working our way back to the reality that despite how things may appear to be, God is still good and he will always be good. That, that, that's, why, that's why, brothers and sisters, the, the expressions and the example of Jeremiah in this book of Lamentations is so important to our faith. The, the, the harsh realities of our lives can cause us to forget the kind of God that we are in relationship with. But engaging in the language of lamentation, it does something. It invites us to remember. When we lament, we remember that we have real hurts. We remember that we have real pain. We remember that we have real struggles. We remember that we have real suffering and real questions. But we also remember something else. And that is, we remember that we serve a God who is real faithful and does not change. This is what this text is about. It's about a believer whose personal pain temporarily caused him to forget 
the character of God, but is reminded through his reflection and through his lamentation of who God is. And as we examine this text more directly, it is a passage that is primed to teach us that remembering who God is helps us to manage the pains of life and maintain a heart of worship in the midst of that pain. In other words, the person who is able to look death and devastation in the face and not lose their mind, the person who can go through seasons of suffering and not come out bitter, the person who can face loss and rejection and not become cynical and hopeless, the person who can cry and be upset about the way things are and still sit around the Thanksgiving table thankful that things are not worse than they or not as bad as they could be, that is the person who can remember that in spite of it all and in sight of it all, God is still God. I wish I had a praying church. Re remembering who God is helps us to manage the pain of life and maintain a heart of worship in the midst of them. And so therefore, one of the most effective things we can do, brothers and sisters, one of the most effective spiritual life hacks that we can employ is to engage in honest expressions of our pain and allow our pain to wrestle with our faith because it is the fight between faith and pain that usually leads to a greater level of trust in God. I'm trying to say that when you are honest about what you're feeling, and when you have some real questions for God when you don't understand what's going on, going through that process leads you to a place where you can remember who God is. What, what must take place, the question is, what, what must take place in the heart and mind of a person for them to remember God in the midst of their pain? Can I give you two things and I'll be done? Here's the first thing. If you're going to remember God even in the midst of your pain, you can't allow the pain of a season to conform your perspective of God. Can I say that again? You can't allow the pain of a season to conform your perspective of God. I, I need you to hear this. When God permits or prescribes us to go through seasons and experiences that cause us intense pain. The anxiety of the experience usually puts us in a frame of mind where we abandon what we know about him, and then we redefine God based on our present circumstances, right? That is to say that we allow the pain of the moment to change our perspective of God. And we, 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 we see this and do this more often than we are willing to admit, depending on which side of the situation we are on, we will sometimes allow our personal experience to shape how we see God in that moment. So, for example, if we're on the side of promotion, God is good. <laughs> but if we're on the side of of downsizing, then we say, God doesn't understand my situation. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if your friend's mother passes away, it's the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But if your mother passes away unexpectedly, God, why this isn't fair? I, 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 I could go on, but I, I think you get the point. In moments of intense pain and high anxiety, we often allow the pain of the moment to adjust our perspective. And we have a different view of God. While this reaction may be common and human to us, part of our spiritual progression as people of faith is learning how to manage these moments responsibly by not allowing the trauma of the experience to trap us 
into adopting a low view of God. I, I, I just said something right there. Watch this. When you allow the trauma of an experience to trap your mind, it will have you thinking that whatever your experience is, is a personal attack from God. And it'll make you indifferent to the reality that God uses all of our experiences for a purpose that is bigger and beyond us and that whatever happens to you exclusively is not always about you. In other words, what helps us to avoid hopelessness and maintain a consistent perspective of God in painful seasons is your ability to remember, hear me, that God does not change from being who he has always been just to get you. I, I don't know if y'all catching what I'm throwing. When you allow trauma to trap your mind, you will think that God has changed who he's always been just to bring some pain in your life. That, that, that's the trap that Jeremiah initially fell into that temporarily conformed his perspective and caused him to forget who God is. Watch the text. When Jeremiah saw all of the destruction and devastation and damage that had been done to Jerusalem, the trauma of it all caused him to take it personal. Just look at how he opens the chapter. Verse 1, I am the one who has seen affliction under the, under the rod of God's wrath. Although Jeremiah is reporting on the experiences of Israel. This is interesting. He's reporting on the experiences of the entire community at the hands of, of the Babylonians. Jeremiah is so affected by the trauma of it that he feels that this is what God has done to him personally. In fact, between verses 1 through 18, Jeremiah uses some 30 personal pronouns in describing what he called his affliction. Now, was Jeremiah personally affected by this experience? Yes, he was. But it was the personal perspective that was absent of a broader perspective that made him temporarily forget the character of the God that he was in relationship with. Do you see it? The Jeremiah who preached about the faithful God who would give Israel a future and a hope on the other side of the exile is the same Jeremiah who in verses 1 through 6 accused God of being a crooked shepherd. In verses 1 through 6, when you read them in your own time, he accused God of being a crooked shepherd who beats his sheep, leads them into dangerous and dark places where they can be attacked, and one who makes their lives bitter. The same Jeremiah who preached and prophesied about hope in verses 7 through 9 equates God to a prison warden that puts his own people in solitary confinement in prisons that he specially designed for them so that no one could help them and their prayers couldn't be heard. The same Jeremiah in verses 10 through 13 compares God to a wild animal that attacks weak people that can't protect themselves. And he also compares God to a hunter who instead of hunting for wild animals, chooses to shoot and kill his own people. The trauma has trapped Jeremiah's mind and caused him to take everything personally and conform his image of God. The anxiety of it all has caused him to abandon truth Adopt a pessimistic perspective like some of you feel when painful occurrences happen in your life. Jeremiah feels as though God has humiliated him and ripped the happiness right out of his life. That's what he said in verse 17. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. That's what he meant when he Lamented, I have become the laughing stock of all my people and the object of their taunting songs. That's what he meant when he said, God is making me eat a diet of bitterness and dirt. 
I, I grind my teeth on gravel and I cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. My soul is bereft of blessing and wholeness and shalom. I, I have forgotten what happiness is. Or in other words, I have forgotten what goodness might ever look like. So here's what I say, Jeremiah says. I, 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 I pronounce this over my life. I pronounce Ichabod. I, I, I say, gone is my glory, and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The trauma that Jeremiah has experienced has trapped him in a place of hopelessness where he is living a life of faith with no expectation from God. Friends, I need to tell you, that's a dangerous place to be in life, to be in a place of hopelessness. Is to be in a place where you have edited the future out of your life. To be in a place of hopelessness is to picture yourself as being so low that you don't even believe that the hand of God can lift you up. This is where Jeremiah was. and This is where some of you may be today because of the painful realities that you are experiences. I, I, I don't know all of what they are, but my word to you today is this. Don't allow the trauma of this season to trap your mind and cause you to conform your perspective of God and abandon hope in God. Don't allow this season to give you spiritual or personal amnesia that makes you forget who God is or makes you to believe that nothing good can ever happen. It, it, it's easy to do. It's easy to make everything personal and feel as though you were destined to just have bad luck in life. It's easy to forget that when painful and excruciating and undesired experiences befall us, uh, that God is still the same God uh, that he's always been. But before you fall into the trap of trauma and forgetfulness, I want to challenge you to do what Jeremiah did. And that is to remember God. I need to say it again. Remember God. Remember God and don't allow the pain of a season to do the second thing that I want to say and I'm done. Don't allow, first of all, the pain of a season to conform your perspective of God. But don't allow the pain of a season to control your perspective of God. I'm finished when I tell you that as a growing person of faith, you can't allow the pain of a particular season to conform your perspective, but you also can't allow the pain to control your perspective. There comes a time, hear me, there comes a time in the life of every believer when they will have to make a decision, what they will allow to occupy the sacred and sanctified space of their mind. This is a critical decision. Why? Because what you allow your mind to reflect on has a direct influence on your spiritual attitude. It influences your approach to life. You, you know what Proverbs 23, 7 says. As a person thinks in their heart, so, are he, so is he or she. Paul tells us, that we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may be able to see better the perfect will of God for our lives. It, it matters greatly what we feed into our minds because those thoughts will shape our perspectives. And those perspectives will ultimately guide the direction of our lives when it comes to painful seasons, the mind that chooses to focus only on what God is doing in that moment will eventually lead to an outlook on life like the one Jeremiah had in the first 18 verses. And that is a perspective that doesn't take into consideration the totality of who God is. But hear this. When, however, you take control of your thoughts, and refuse to allow the pain of a moment to dictate to your spirit 
or redefine what you know about God, that's when you will get to a place and point where you recognize that thinking about what God allows to be taken without thinking about what God gives is a contradiction. I want to say that again. You will ultimately get to a point where you recognize that thinking about what God takes without also thinking about what God gives is a contradiction. You, you'll begin to recognize that lamenting what has been lost without acknowledging the hope of future possibilities with God is a conflict of spiritual interests. What one commentator put it this way, it, 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 it shouts me, regardless of what has transpired, with God in the picture, the God who will always be what he will be, there cannot not be a future. There cannot not be hope. In other words, you cannot reflect on what God has done and not expect God to do something else. I need to say that one more time. You cannot reflect on what God has done and not expect God to do something else. That in a real sense, reflection leads to expectation. And the key to it all is that you cannot allow your perspective of God to be controlled by a season. Listen, listen to me. Your pain will lie to you. I, I don't know if y'all catching what I'm throwing. Your pain will lie to you. But you, however, have to take charge over your mind and remember the truth of who God is. It's what Jeremiah does. He's still in pain, but he exercises good management over his mind by telling himself what he's going to think about. Note in verses 19 and 20, how Jeremiah, watch this, he drives down the wrong side of memory lane and he ends up crashing into depression. He says, the thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. Now, for those of you who don't know what wormwood and gall are, these are substances that have a bitter taste. So Jeremiah is describing how his experience made him think about life in bitter terms. And again, after all Jeremiah has seen, this is a natural psychological reaction to that kind of trauma. However, he intensifies the bad experience down memory lane by repeatedly replaying in his mind what happened, which eventually led to his soul sinking into a state of depression. But I want you to note the U-turn that Jeremiah makes in verse 21 that moves him from being on the wrong side of memory lane to being on the right side of memory lane that leads him to a destination called Shouting Street. <laughs> Jer Jeremiah says, I know what I was thinking about, and what I was thinking about was making me depressed. But this I called to mind, and therefore I had hope. Uh, church folk don't know when to shout. Do, do you see Jeremiah taking control? He, he says, this I called to my mind. I, I, I'm going to make this come back into my thinking so that my perspective on life can change. I, I'm going to stop thinking about that because that is keeping me depressed. That is keeping me angry. That is keeping me frustrated. But I'm going to think about this because this is something that I know. And what I know is what I need to be thinking about right now. Faith, that family, there comes a time in your life when your faith will be at a crossroads. And it is then that you will have to have the spiritual audacity to snatch up your mind and command your will to remember 
what you already know. If you allow them, if you allow them, when you consistently think about this pandemic, when you think about this president, when you think about the politics, all of the prejudices in the land, and even your own personal problems, if you will allow them, these things will drive you into a state of depression. But, but you have to be dogmatic and, and, and deliberate in your decision to choose not to focus on that, but call and command your mind to think on this. I, I, I'm done, but, but, but what is the this? What is the this that, that Jeremiah chose to think about that caused him to have hope? I, I'm so glad he tells us in verses 22 and 23, he says, this is what I'm going to think about. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, but they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In short, this is Jeremiah declaring that in the midst of pain, misfortune, confusion, brokenness, and uncertainty, that he chooses to remember God. And remembering God gives him hope for better days. He chooses first to remember God's steadfast love. His steadfast love, the Hebrew word there is hesed, which is more accurately defined as the loyal love of God. It was the ancient believer's way of describing God's love as a love that doesn't quit on you. It, 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 it's a love that's faithful. It's a love that sticks with you uh, even when you don't have the capacity or the presence of mind uh, to stick with it. it it's, it's a love that's there even when it doesn't look or feel like that it's there. It, it's a love that's kind towards you even when you don't deserve it. King, King James, he tried to describe it in English, but he couldn't find one word to fit the description, so he put two words together, and he just called it loving kindness. And, and, and when you are facing some painful and traumatizing experiences that make you feel that God has forsaken you and that God doesn't love you, you need to remember this, the love of the Lord, his loving kindness, his love that does not quit on you. Jeremiah says it never ceases. In good times, he loves me. In bad times, he loves me. In prosperity, he loves me. In cutbacks, he loves me. In health, he loves me. In cancer treatments, he loves me. At the birth of my child, he loves me. At the death of my child, he loves me. In my marriage, he loves me. In my divorce, he loves me. At my best, he loves me. At my worst, he loves me. His love never ceases. In, in fact, it gets better because Jeremiah says not only does his loyal love does not cease, but he says his mercies are new every morning. God's love is so loyal towards me that each day he gives to us mercy that extends our lives that should be cut off. In fact, the word picture is in the verse is of a woman who gives birth. And when that experience happens between the child and the mother, something wonderful happens. Let, let me help you see it. When a child is born... The child is given the blessing of new life. But on the other side, when the child is born, the mother gets joy out of knowing that she gets to take care of the child. Don't miss your shout. Each day of your life, you get to be born again. Because the stuff you did, the things you said, the thoughts you had, the places you went, the safety precautions that you did not take should have killed you. But God in his mercy, I feel like preaching here, he, he gave you new life. 
and, and mercy for new life is enough to shout about. But then Jeremiah says, he doesn't leave you to take care of yourself with you and your independent ways. But God gets joy out of taking care of you because it proves one thing. What's the one thing that it proves? Great. <laughs> I wish I had a praying church. Great is his faithfulness. I'm going to say it one more time. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. I I'm finished, but that's why you have to remember God. If you focus on all this other stuff and take everything that happens to you personally, it'll make you forget that God loves you that God is merciful, and that God is faithful. No matter what he has done or what he has not done yet, God loves you, God is merciful, and God is faithful. Whatever the circumstances, God does not change. Whatever his actions may appear to be, God does not change. Even if what he's doing pushes your theology to the limits, you better remember God does not change. God is still God. And because God is still God, you can regain the hope that Jeremiah gained in verse 24 where he says, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will hope in him. Hope is about waiting in expectation. Jeremiah says, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I'm experiencing right now. I'm going to wait on the Lord and expect him to do great things because at the end of the day, God is all I have. Even if I have to wait all of my life, my, my testimony is going to be like Job. All the days of my appointed time, I wish I had a Bible reader, I, I'm going to wait until my change comes. And you need to remember God and wait on him to turn things around. Her name is Jill Price. And Jill, just like every other person that God created, except for one unique and unexplainable ability that she has, Jill can't forget. Jill has a rare condition called hyperthymistic syndrome that gives her automatic, perfect recall. Since she was 11 years old, Jill has been able to automatically recall every event in her life. And whatever else she commits to memory, she can recall it down to the date, time, even the weather pattern. She doesn't try to remember these things. Her mind just calls them up. Uh... In her own words, Jill admits that this condition is a gift and a curse because there are some things that happen in life, Jill says, that you don't want to remember. But when she asked, when she was asked if she wished this was a gift she didn't have, Jill responded, sometimes, because the phrase, time heals all wounds, doesn't apply to me. But on the other side, I'm thankful for the gift, and I've learned to appreciate it because there are some things that are too wonderful for me to forget. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, Bella Vista. But, but this morning, you may not have hypothymistic syndrome, but if you've been walking with God for a little while, you should have some memories that are too wonderful to forget. I wonder if there's anybody listening to me who can say, I got some wonderful memories with God. Things may be rough right now. It's been a rough 2020. But, but I got some wonderful memories with God. And the memories that I have with God are too wonderful to forget. I remember how God kept me. I remember how God never left me. I remember how God brought me. And I remember how God taught me. 
I remember how God saved me. And I remember how God raised me. I remember how God fed me. And I remember how God led me. Anybody got some memories that are too wonderful to forget? Never was there a time when I needed that you did not give. When I required eternal life, you died that I might live. You're faithful and great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. That's my testimony, not just this Thursday, uh, but each and every day of my life. Uh, I don't care how things look right now. Uh, my testimony is, uh, great is uh, thy faithfulness, uh, oh God, uh, my Father. Uh, there is no shadow uh, of turning with thee. Thou changes not, uh, thy compassions, they fail not. Uh, as thou hast been, uh, thou forever will be. Uh, summer and winter, uh, springtime and harvest, uh, sun, moon, and stars uh, in the courses above. Uh, join with all nature uh, in manifold witness uh, to thy great faithfulness, uh, mercy, and love. Here's my verse. Uh, pardon for sin uh, and a peace that endureth uh, thine own dear presence uh, to cheer and to guide uh, strength for the day uh, and bright hope for tomorrow uh, blessings on man uh, with 10,000 beside uh, great is uh, thy faithfulness uh, I wish I had somebody to help me here uh, if you know God has been good to you uh, in spite of all you're going through, uh, you want to lift up your hands, uh, open up your mouth, uh, and say, great is uh, thy faithfulness. Uh, morning by morning, uh, new mercies I see. Uh, all I have needed, uh, your hand uh, has provided. Uh, great is uh, thy faithfulness. Uh, Lord unto me anybody got some memories with him anybody can look back over your life things may be bad right now but can you look back over your life and see the ways God has already made for you you can see the doors that is already open for you and so you ought to have a heart of gratitude that says for every mountain you brought me over huh? for every trial huh? you see me through huh? for every blessing huh? hallelujah huh? for this huh? I give you praise huh? Jesus huh? I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Never, somebody shall never, never. Yes, sir. Never. I'll never forget. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'll never forget uh, what you've done. Uh, anybody remember uh, all that is done for you? Uh, anybody remember uh, all the ways he made for you? Uh, I dare you to take about 30 seconds uh, and just go down memory lane. Uh, and you shouldn't have to go that far. Uh, you should go back uh, to just a few hours ago. Uh, and you can testify, uh, he woke me uh, up this morning, uh, started me uh, on my way, uh, put clothes on my back, uh, shoes on my feet, uh, breath in my body, uh, 
and because I got breath, I'm going to use every last one of them to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you don't have anything else to thank him for, if you don't have anything else to praise him for, if you don't have anything else to bless his name for, can I give you one thing that you can be thankful for? One Friday, I said one Friday, one Friday, he died. I said he died. He died. I said he died. He died for your sin. He died for my sin. He died for the sin of the world. Anybody out there know he died? They laid him in a grave. But somebody help me shout here. This is why I thank him. This is what I'll never forget. Early, I said early, early, Sunday morning, uh, he got up, uh, yeah, he got up, uh, he got up, uh, not with some power, uh, but with all power, uh, all power, uh, all power uh, in his hand, uh, shout yeah. Shout yeah, shout yeah, 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 I know he's all right. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him for his mercy. Praise him for his loving kindness. Praise him for his faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Remember, remember God. Don't allow a present moment or a present season to conform and control your perspective and cause you to believe that your testimony is you don't know what happiness is. You've forgotten what good is. No, if you got good memory, you can see that God has been good to you all of your life. But what you choose to focus on, what you choose to call to mind, is what gives you a heart of worship and a heart of gratitude. 
I know this time of the year, we say it every year, many people get depressed. Suicide rates go up. This year it's compounded by COVID-19. Many of us won't be able to gather with our families like we normally do. And that adds to the anxiety. And if you choose to focus just on the pandemic and the problems and everything else that's going on, guess what? You're going to be just like Jeremiah who said, it, it made my soul depressed. But you got to take control of your mind and say, I'm not going to think about that. But I'm going to think about how merciful the Lord's been. How loving the Lord has been. How faithful the Lord has been. And when I think about that, it causes me to have hope. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise for his word. <clears throat> I really love the Lord, I really love the Lord. You ought to sing that with us. You don't know, you don't. Yeah. He gave me. Hallelujah. That's why I, I, I really love, love the Lord. Say it again. I really love him. I, yes, I do. In spite of everything that I'm experiencing. I really love him. Hallelujah. You don't know. Gave me. That's why I love him. I. I really love him. We're going to go, but let's sing that one more time. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Gave me. That's why I love him. I. I really love him. Listen, let's take it down. Listen, someone's listening to me today, and you say, preacher, this, this, this sermon was right on time for me because I was getting ready to throw myself a pity party. I was getting ready to lose hope. I didn't think life was worth living. I had gotten to a point where I couldn't see a future for myself. And I was just going to wave the white flag of surrender. Listen, if you're looking or listening to me today, I want you to know that with God, even as I mentioned in the sermon, with God, there's always a future. There is no end in God. God is. He is the great I am. He will be who he will be. And because God is, there's always a future for you. God has a plan for your life. And I, I hope I've encouraged you to know that if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, if you believe in the finished work of Christ and what he has already done, if you give him the whole of yourself, the whole of your spirit, the whole of your mind, the whole of your body, if you yield and surrender all of yourself to him, I'm not here to promise you that, that things are going to change overnight. It's a process. 
But what I can guarantee you is, is that there will be positivity and progress in your life. Not just here, but the greater blessing is that God gives you abundant life and life even beyond this one. The security and the blessing of eternal life with him. And so if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ by faith, I want you, if you feel led by the Spirit today, and if you do, please don't ignore the Spirit. I want you to make a decision for Christ. If you are already a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, but you're not living your discipleship in full because you're disconnected from a church community, I'm appealing to you as well. If you're across the city, across the state, even across the country, the blessing of technology, even in this space, has afforded us the opportunity for you to be able to be a part of this family, even from distant places, from local places, whoever you are, wherever you are. This is a place where you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you need a church family today, if you need a relationship with Christ today, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go to our church website, bellavistanbc.org, right now. Do it right now. Or you can hop in our inbox right now. Send us a DM right now. Give us your name. Give us your number. Give us your email address. Then let us know why it is that you're coming, why it is that you want to connect with us. And I promise you we'll have counselors reach out to you to help lead you and guide you in the decisions that you have made today. I bless the Lord. I praise God for any and every one of you who's going to make a decision. And we believe that God is going to do great things in your life. Family, let's give God praise for anybody who may be coming today. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, I want you to know, as always, our offices are closed this week in observance for the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, no Bible study this Wednesday. We'll resume that uh, the week after Thanksgiving. I want you to have a happy Thanksgiving. I want you to have a blessed Thanksgiving uh, in whatever way that you're doing it this year. For those of you uh, who are uh, gathering, I just want you to be safe. Take every safety precaution that you can um, and adhere to the, the guidelines as much as you can because it is my desire that every member, rem every member remain safe and sound during this particular season. I also need uh, you to check your emails this week. Those of you, uh, I'm going to be sending out an appeal uh, tomorrow. Uh, those of you who may be available to uh, help me this coming Tuesday, uh, we're going to again gather uh, the collection of our gift cards, and we're going to uh, go to some of the uh, grocery stores uh, in this area, and I'm going to need a group or a team of people, maybe two or three teams uh, to help me. It doesn't need to be a whole lot of people, uh, maybe nine or ten people, and we'll, we'll split up maybe in twos or threes uh, to go and help pass these cards out, to give these cards away uh, to individuals who are going to need them during this Thanksgiving season. So be on the lookout for that email. If you could help me, I would love for you to go and do this with me uh, as we want to improve the lives uh, that we come into contact with. Amen. Amen. We give God praise for this worship. We're prepared to leave from this place now. Thank you so much for tuning in to our virtual visitors again. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope and pray that you were blessed by the worship right where you are, wherever you are, wherever you are. I want you to repeat after me these words. At Bella Vista, we care about the total person. We encourage people to love God, build relationships, and improve their lives. Bella Vista is the church that cares. Go in peace. Go in love and go in joy. Go always remembering the name of Jesus, always keeping him on your mind. Go remembering God. God is loving God is merciful. God is faithful. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this worship.